On today's episode, we grade Seiya Suzuki. Once and for all, we take some questions from fans and we report on Boog Shambi taking over a certain series for a certain media property that's all ahead right now. Locked on Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Cubs alongside Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. Pleased to be with you for a Wednesday episode. And there certainly is a lot to get into as there has been the last several shows as the offseason is cooking up. The MLB playoffs is in full swing. And uh, it seems like there's always some news as the offseason has rolled along so far. Sam, how's it going on this Tuesday as we record here in the PM, Central Standard Time? And... Uh, more grading for us, more, more classroom work here. <laughs> um, things are going, things are going really well. Um, you don't need to fake laugh. <laughs> you don't need to fake laugh. And no, apologies no. for my, uh, my mouse on the open. It uh, was um, very slow. It's a pleasure to be doing the show with you. I'm honored. I'm blessed. I'm humbled. You know, I never understand when people like when people get a big award, and they say, the first thing I got to say is it's just so humbling. That doesn't make any sense. You, you, people are telling you how great you are at something, and you're saying it humbles you. Right. Ah, sorry, I just wanted to get that off my chest. Yeah, it's a little bit of like the rever reverse processing. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's just the wrong statement. It's people Wrong just time. Saying, people wrong are, time, wrong people place. People using cliches, and they don't know what they're talking about. Now, let's talk about the Chicago Cubs National League. That's going to be a baseball team. Okay, that sounds good. Because I'm a little bit fed up right now. It's the first night of the NBA, and everybody's already resting. What? People are on minutes restrictions. It's a fake getting 100, league. $180 million, but they couldn't get in shape. You know, there's a guy by the name of Michael Jeffrey Jordan that played 82 games from 96 to 98 at 38 minutes a clip. Let's go talk about the Cubs. Well, let's talk about the sport that plays the most games then. Yeah. As uh, durability was a, was a question with this player, consistency. Uh, transition from another league. Now, this is a professional segue, and, folks. And more. And that's going to be Seiya Suzuki, Cubs hey. right fielder. Hey, Jeannie, can I get a pen and take notes, please? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sam, Suzuki's first year with the Cubs. You know, when he signed after the lockout, I was so excited. Um, I remember still where I was. excited about him. But yeah. I still remember that, you know, that that excitement and, and even the buzz in, in the spring as he debuted and, and he showed flashes of, of brilliance, I would say. He also had some times where it was quite concerning with, with the Cubs right fielder. And um, I'll get to my grade in, in a couple of minutes here. But but Suzuki finished with, um, let's see here, if I can just scroll up. I'm having a lot of trouble with my mouse here. That's all right. Um, I can continue if you'd like. Um, right. Say a, say a Suzuki. Really I've tough. Talked, tough sledding. I've, I've talked about him at nauseum this year, um, and I'm a fan of his. I think you are a big fan of his. I, I think it is very difficult to peg um, how challenging it is to come from a different country, and that was fast notice, right? Because of the lockout, you know. And I, I, I've made the comp to Hideki Matsui. I, I think that's the, the best Japanese uh, player comp that I could make. Uh, oh. And that, that guy was a really good player for a really long time. And I think that's, I really think that that's closer to say his floor than it is his ceiling. Uh, and I've gone over the numbers on the show before, so I'm not going to do that again, but you know, do you want to read the numbers first? Do you want me to give yeah. my grade? Okay. So here's Suzuki's numbers this year. Slash line of 262, 336, 433 had an OPS of 770. 14 home runs, 22 doubles, 46 runs batted in, nine stolen bases in 111 baseball games. I would say, Sam, he, he started really, really warm. Great April, um, horrible May, injury, horrible. injury. Right, and then, and then sped up again and then kind of leveled out. Yeah, exactly. Um, defensively, exactly. he, he got started better. very poorly. He got better. 
improved as the season went along. He has a plus arm. Okay. He throws pretty well. Good speed. Showed some flashes to the ability to go get the baseball in a gap or, or towards the foul line. Um, my grade, I think, is, is probably a tougher grade, but it's what my instinct is, is telling me to, to grade say out as. Um, what, what grade are you giving him today? Well, let me just say a couple quick things. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, go ahead. When you look at those numbers, I think they're the absolute worst version of them. First of all, he got called out on more strike threes to the, to the naked eye that were not strike threes than anyone I saw in the big leagues this year. So that 336. It was, it was top five uh, yeah, that, pitches outside the zone that were called yeah, strikes. That, that, that 336 OBP could easily be 350, 360 just off better umpiring. Um, I think he gets used to things. I think he hits for more power next year. Just projecting next year, I would say 135, 140 games, 275 average, 27, 28 home runs with an OPS well over 800, which is good enough to be an all-star. Uh, the, the, the stuff in right field, I really feel like he had to just get a feel because playing right field in Japan is not like playing right field at Wrigley Field in April. It just isn't. It's just a totally different scenario. It might be the same position on paper. It's not. OK, then, you know, he had the worst play he had in right field was that drop at Dodger Stadium. I don't know if you recall that. Yeah, um, a, you know, was again, a routine ball again. Totally. You know, first of all, it's a routine ball. He has to catch it. But a totally different scenery, just totally different ballpark. I think yep. that the, the defense will continue to improve when you consider my, my concern with Seiya Suzuki is health. I think if he's healthy, he's going to produce. And because of that, for his rookie, uh, his rookie year in a Cub uniform, I'll give him a B minus. Yeah, I, I don't think that, you know, I think one of one of the things that I, I dislike about kind of media culture right now and, and fandom is is the, the 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 perception or the tendency to to get defensive and or to perceive analysis right. as defensiveness. And I just think it's it's evaluating and being fair and evaluating players for what they are, what they can be. And I think what you went over is is a very fair evaluation. It's not it's not that we're defending him necessarily. It, it, it's it's how we evaluate him right now because you can't make plays like that defensively. You have to get better. He did. You just leave it at the door. You you have to um, you have to to know the strike zone that improved uh, despite some bad calls. You do you, do you have an ability to not only hit for contact and get on base. But what's his power like? You know, I still remember the day I was on the phone with you and I was way ahead of your feed and he just crushed a baseball <laughs> to left field on a wavelength. And that's what we wanted to see for that time. That was a next step in Suzuki's first season in the show and with the Cubs. And um, he hit another ball to right central um, in September. That was awesome to see. Um, so, so I... I think there's a lot of room for improvement. I th I'm looking forward to him uh, watching him play and, and being a part of the next great Cubs team, but I have to give him a C plus. Fair grade. Uh, if, if the Chicago, you, you ever, you ever remember when you were in science class as a kid, you would do the, the my worst the, subject. Go ahead. The, the, if then hypotheses, right. do you remember that or no? Yes. If then yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I need a comma in yeah. if then sentence as well. If the Chicago Cubs, oh, you're a little close to the mic. Oh, sorry, sorry. I get, I get a little, you know. Yeah. If, if the, the Ch Chicago Cubs, comma, are no, no, not comma. Oh, yet. sorry. If the Chicago Cubs are going to make the postseason next year, comma, right? Then Seiya Suzuki has to play at an All Star level. I really like that a lot. Thank you. Thank you. We should Sorry. tease that out later. Um, you know what I'm starting to see when we do this show as, as the sun begins to be up less and less time, my oh. paleness. Oh, wow. uh, I mean, you look at your skin tone compared to my skin tone. It looks like, you know, we, we're different nationalities. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look good today, honestly. Yeah, no. no you look a little like, like, light. You're, like you're ready. Yeah. And pale. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, hey man, if you want to work on that, the I might season, color my wall. 
So they maybe paint it like a yeah dark color. Yeah, like your something skin color. Warm. Something like a, warm, like a tan. Something warm, maybe like a red. And speaking of tan, <laughs> okay. Uh, no. So so your so your your biggest thing with Suzuki is durability. Would you think you say? if he stays on the if you were to tell me right now that say Suzuki is going to play 150 games next year, I'd wow. have no doubts that he could that that he's going to be a, a majorly impact five war player. And just organically, the consistency is going to emerge. Yeah. So I think the consistency, yes, there is, you're right. You're right, Matt. There is a little bit of like, okay, he wasn't hurt in May. What the hell happened? Um, right. And I just think, I, I don't know. I bet maybe I'm being too easy on him. I just think that he's just kind of learning the game, adjusting to the readjustment. I just look at him and feel like he could hit. The, the biggest X's and O's thing with him is just in certain situations, he has to be more aggressive. When the game is on the line, don't take two pitches. I get it. I get that you're a passive hitter. I get that you have a great eye. But but to keep the pitchers honest, once a week when the game's on the line, attack a first pitch and hit one of the left field gap. A lot of first yeah. pitch strikes that he took. Yeah, right. He's got um, and, and, but I, I think he's a smart hitter. And I, I really believe yeah. that like he knew when he was signing with the Cubs and Jed knew, hey, we're not gonna be that great this first year. Use this as a trial run, right? And I, and I think he used it as a really effective trial run. And I'm expecting a big jump. And, and if we get to May 15th next year and he isn't, he doesn't look the part, I'll be the first one to say that I'm really upset. No, I know you will be. And I think and, he could really hit. And in terms of the lineup, you know, granted, there's going to be additions to it's this a great ball club. question. It's a great question by a great host. But where do you, but where do you think he should bat? So. And, and, and does his salary have anything to do with that? No, no, that's people got to move on from that. Right. Well, anywhere, I, just, I wanted to address it anywhere from one, two or three or four. Okay. I, I would say, I would say one through five. Yeah. One. Yeah. Okay. Depending on who they get. Sure. Assume Let's say they get a shortstop. He'll hit second. Does he feel if, if he feels comfortable leading off, it's a really good spot for him because I know I haven't Hap, heard that. I know. I know Hap doesn't. Interesting. Hap is, I believe, said publicly that leading off kind of messed with him in 17 a little bit. So you think he would he would fit well lead off? Well, think about it. He gets on base. He takes right. a lot of pitches. And his passive approach, that's effective as a leadoff hitter. Especially to open a game. To open a game. You have an eight, nine pitch at bat, and you know, you Huge. tire a guy out. I don't know. I could see him hitting leadoff if he if he doesn't mind it. And he's one of the few Cubs that actually could run the bases. Cubs were putrid at that this year. Let's steal third with one out with Fred Mill. Let's t- hey, terrible. let's run that one, David. Huh? I don't know. Hey, maybe he steal a third. Maybe he man no, on one, second one out full count. They steal third with with a two hundred and seventy pound human. Yeah, Suzuki nine steals. Maybe he has the potential to go fifteen plus. You know, he played one hundred eleven games. Yeah, it probably some- extrapolates to twenty steals. Yeah, he should run. And I think yeah, he should get the first to third. Be a good base runner. I mean, right. Suzuki Correa to start out a game is those are two tough outs that wow, take a lot of that'd pitches. be exciting. Swing it over to a half, swing it over to a horner, and you look up, it's three nothing Northshiders. Coming up next, we dig into some fan feedback and answer a question about a potential infield addition that we have yet to discuss. Stick around. Have you noticed the pains of dress shirts nowadays? What about the hassle of changing clothes? for different activities. Why hasn't there been a dress shirt that just makes you feel good? Well, now there is. The dress shirt was due for radical reinvention and Roan stepped up to the challenge. Roan's commuter shirt is the most comfortable, breathable, and flexible shirt known to man, and here's why. Roan's comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way from your commute to work to your 18 holes of golf. It's time to feel confident with a wrinkle-free shirt without the hassle. And with Roan's wrinkle release technology, wrinkles disappear as you stretch and wear the shirt. It's that easy. With Gold Fusion anti-odor technology, you'll be smelling fresh and clean all day. And on top of that, Roan is 100% machine washable, so you can ditch the dry cleaners altogether. The commuter shirt can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to Roan.com slash locked on and use the promo code locked on to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to 
R-H-O-N-E dot com slash locked on and use the code locked on. It's time to find your corner office comfort. Absolutely. Especially a change of seasons. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta breathe. You gotta let it I breathe. I need new shirts. Really? Yeah, I got a birthday coming up, folks. Just in case, you know. Send send your old Rome. buddy Sam. Yeah. Send, send your old buddy Sam, you know. Right, right. You know, don't be afraid. You know, he does a lot for you. Talks about this club every day. So Tom on YouTube and Lyndon from Kentucky, who also Lyndon adds. Uh, love your show. And then he he, he makes a suggestion, in which I'm going to reveal first to Sam off the air, and then eventually we'll bring it to the air. That's just a tease right there. Tease to me, too. You don't have I to know. tease me. I'm part of the program. Very inside. So these guys bring up Brandon Drury, Sam, who was on the Reds, got traded to the Padres at the deadline. Yeah. Um, 263, 320, 492 slash line. You know, not that exciting. What what I think people are grabbing is, is he a free 20, 28 home runs. Yeah. Yeah. 87 runs batted in. He was on a, a Padres lineup that has a lot of base runners. Um, but, well, but he did now, most of his damage with Cincinnati. But two people now have brought up Brandon Drury in the last couple of days. Someone that necessarily was not on our radar. Um, he wasn't in my notebook of players, but but I suppose I could add him. And uh, might be an option at third base. I, I just think he would come at a high price, and, and the money should be spent elsewhere. Uh, um, but it's an intriguing I, name. I would just be very careful about guys that go off before a contract year. Um, here's a guy that has a career 736 OPS. Here's a guy that's best year before this. Uh, um, you know, I, I guess he, he had a decent year in 21 with the Mets, but didn't really move the needle with a 307 on base. Um, uh, he's primarily used on the Padres right now to face left-handed pitching. Um, I, I, I don't, I just don't, you know, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's a real need there, but, um, for like, like, like I get, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, I could see him. He's not going to play second. He'd be for no, third only. I, I could see Patrick wisdom. Like, I think Patrick wisdom could be him. <laughs> Right. Wisdom for 700 K is, is that's right. the move. Exactly. You know, Drury's going to command probably a two year deal, um, you know, in a neighborhood that you could, you could use those resources elsewhere. Right. Um, so, so we'll keep some tabs on that. Was there anything that stuck out to you the last couple of days with the, the Abreu episode or the, the free agent wish list or the shortstops um, that, that you um, wanted to highlight or address? Uh, well, no, but the the guy that we discussed a little bit on yesterday's show that 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 right fielder for New York, Aaron Judge. Yeah, he just hit a home run. What? Yeah. What's the score of this ball game? That's going to be four nothing Yankees. Disappointed, ashamed, wow. and embarrassed that my guy Tito Francona ran out Aaron Savali to start that game because you know I've quietly liked Cleveland all year. I bet them actually at the All Star break to win the division. Shout out to Bet Online um, and, uh, and and, and reap the benefits of that with a couple steak sandwiches. Well, so yeah, yeah. Um, anything that stood out. Um, well, we I got we got one really cool comment. I'd like to share. Do you do you have a favorite between Padres and Phillies? By the way, I like to see San Diego win. Okay, that's where uh, I'm at too. Um, uh, shout out to Darren. I feel like I've shouted him out a little. Uh, this isn't the first time I've shouted him well, out. Well, maybe I mean. he's just good at at some yeah. of his comments. Um, Phillies have a lot of former Cubs, but I think I'm going to go with the Friars as well. Love locked on Cubs. Haven't been so excited for a daily view since Johnny Carson and Ed McMahon. Oh, wow. What a great comment. Yeah, a lot of history you know, there. I challenge all of our listeners that are younger to go on YouTube and watch some Carson. Any like suggestions to, to as a launching point or just Rickles? Just Rickles search. and Carson. So Johnny Carson, Don Rickles in the yeah. search bar. Yeah, that's comedy and that's late night TV, folks. I'm going to do that. Uh, I might not do that this, after the show. Not this stuff we see every – oh, my God, what a great film. I'm Jimmy Fallon. Here's what we have coming up. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, and the other thing I saw, 
some hesitancy on Abreu. Um, a little bit, especially defensively. Especially defensively. He took the words out of my mouth. Um, I, I, yeah, and, and, and just I, a, a real general excitement about the club. And do you have any built bars left? I, I, I Yeah, because I promised Nick I'd bring him one, and I still haven't. If you haven't tried built Bar Puffs yet, you're depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Let me introduce you all to your new favorite, the Cookie Dough Chunk Puffs. They have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus... It's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you and the family. It will be the perfect treat, or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them for yourself. What's great about Built is that all their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you, whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, a quick bite, maybe a, a Halloween uh, item, maybe a gift uh, for a friend. Then Built is the perfect protein bar and they taste better than a candy bar. So ditch the calories, ditch the fat, ditch the sugar and grab yourself a Built bar right now. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKDOWN15 and get 15% off your order that's promo code locked on 15 we're back here on locked on cubs thanks for making us your first listen every day we are going to close out today with some news cubs tv broadcaster boog shambi who still has a contract with espn on the tv and the radio side he's been doing a lot of radio um, in the playoffs and in 2023 he's going to take over the world series broadcast a play-by-play for ESPN Radio. Uh, last year, prior to, uh, as they were making some changes with Sunday Night Baseball, Boog was in that convo. He's he's very highly viewed in, in the ESPN ranks and uh, really in baseball media. Um, and uh, you can see that with, with, with this, with this uh, move by ESPN, and, and Boog will be calling the Fall Classic uh, beginning next year. Congratulations to Boog. It's well deserved. He's a phenomenal national broadcaster. I just don't love him uh, being the, the the local broadcaster for my team. Um, I, I'm assuming you feel the same way because I, I have something else I'd like to bring up. Yeah, I just think that I'm anticipating that I'm going to warm up to him. And if that's when the team starts, it, team starts winning, might be. It's, it's fair. Might be if he's generally excited. But 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 if it's the seventh inning. And and it's tied in September, and they're a game behind St. Louis, and he starts telling a story about when he was seven years old at a Star Wars convention. You know that's unacceptable. Okay, and that's fair too. But but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to warm up to him. I think. I hey, change, I know. Change my I, tune a bit. Go ahead. Yeah, you could change your tune. Uh, whatever. Uh, this isn't. You know, you're not Paul McCartney. Um, I um, go ahead. I have, a, I have a lot. You know, I like to bounce around, especially during the off season, right, Matt? Because you know, there's we're, we're talking about the Cubs and we love doing that, but just certain things that come up, I like to entertain our listeners. Um, you know, and, and I'm going to try and be serious for a second here. <laughs> All right. Um, I just want I just hope our listeners uh, find this quote as inspiring as I found today. Um, it really, I can't even keep a straight face. Oh, geez. <laughs> Who's this from? Probably probably a Chicago Bull or Chicago Bear is my guess. <laughs> Because they are not looking good right now. <laughs> oh, you know me so well. It's great. Um, you know, if you're just going through a hard time. And the Bulls in life, start this week, right? Can you? Can I talk, please? Yeah, sir. Uh, if you're going through a hard time in life, anxiety, perseverance, depression, just remember this quote today from Bears head coach Matt Eberflus. I would say that we are strong where we are strong right now, and we need to improve where we need to improve. End quote, Bears coach, Matt Eberflew. Uh, <laughs> Be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube. On all your favorite Locked On Cubs content, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your pods on the audio side, and drop us a text, 312-834-4634. Thanks for making Locked On Cubs your first listen every day. Now make your second 
the Locked On MLB and Game to Game podcast, which will be reviewing both Padres and Phillies game one of the NLCS and ALDS game five, Yankees and Guardians on Thursday's uh, episode. Or I guess that would be Wednesday, as I forget the days of the week. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked On Cubs.